Welcome back. This is kind of a nice Christmas feeling in the house these days. I hope you have the same thing going on. I had an excellent request from a viewer, Braden, and actually he wasn't the only one, but he was the first. So thanks for suggesting a comparison between the Winchester Model 70 and the Remington 700. And I'll start the comparison in an odd place. <clears throat> I have here a Springfield 1903 made by Remington. And the reason I have it here in the first place is that these bolt action designs that we're familiar with had to come from somewhere. So this is the rifle that GIs were familiar with. This one happens to be in, in almost unissued condition and I fired this rifle. It's, it's excellent in every way. Uh, anyway, so people returning from the First World War were familiar with um, ballistic performance consistent with this rifle, 30 odd 6 and it was obvious that it was superior ballistically to a model 1894 Winchester and, and any of the and the other uh, traditional lever actions and firearms of the time. And of course this was based on the Mauser 98. Anyhow, so the factories, Winchester and Remington, uh, obviously decided they probably should come up with bolt action rifles because this is what people wanted. They wanted the superior ballistics and you can look up the difference between a 30-30 and a 30-06. Uh, not that I don't like 30-30s. They have their place um, for sure and some of my other videos deal with that. Anyhow, um, I put on the table a Mauser 98 just to give you a uh, a, a glimpse of the trigger system and the bolt which you're familiar with. You can see that the trigger is a two-stage two trigger. Um, the design is very simple. It's a superb battle trigger and this is the floor plate and uh, magazine assembly and I mean this is an expensive piece to mill um, but when the Mauser was being made the cost of labor was different and 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 this was not a rifle um, necessarily made for commercial gain although that was part of the equation uh, you know nationalism at that time was was a big part of the equation so I leave this here because uh, the two heavyweights of the firearms industry probably to this day are, well, not necessarily the companies, but the products are the Winchester Model 70, which is this, this is the stock of, and the Remington 700, which this is the stock of. So just quickly, we'll go through the Model 70. This is a pre-war Model 70, and you can see, um, I'll have to rearrange these. This is the Mauser 98, and this is the Model 70. Um, and, and you, you can see the heritage of one, but it's not quite as obvious as, as, as it should be. And so I was hoping to run into a Model 54. You may or may not have heard of a Model 54, but that's this rifle here. And this is the rifle Winchester came up with when they decided that they should have a rifle similar to the Springfield. And I still think that the Model 54 has the best styled bolt, like the bolt itself, of any bolt action rifle that I've handled. The stock is kind of minimalist. Uh, it's good for iron sights. They were usually drilled and tapped in the front. And this was an aperture or receiver sight rig. The barrel is nickel steel. I'm not sure if we can focus in on that. Um, and actually the bore on this rifle is like new, even though it's seen a lot of hunting use. And uh, I was just going to say I was waiting for a Model 54 and then my friend Gary came up with one. So um, that was a good coincidence. And I'm just going to show you the back of the bolt assembly here. You can see the safety on the Model 54 and there's the Mauser. They happen to be in different positions right now, but you can definitely see where Winchester got the idea for their safety and their bolt action rifle. So we're effectively talking about a sporter version of a Mauser 98. And um, apparently 
uh, there was a Model 51 before this 54. And the 51 um, involved a lot of hand fitting, and so they came up with the 54. And I actually took it apart so you could see what's what. And um, I'll set the stock over here. And here's the 54. So if I didn't tell you it was a 54, I think a lot of people would think this is a Winchester Model 70. The, the trigger is obviously more like a Mauser 98. It's a two-stage trigger. Um, I have no problem with it, um, but you know that I, I'm a little more flexible with triggers than a lot of people. And I should thank a, a, a viewer by the name of Rudy for his comments and, um, um, frankly, a little education on triggers. I appreciate what you had to say. So anyway, this is a very simple trigger, probably almost a copy of the 98 box magazine. It's all steel. Everything on the 54 is steel or stainless steel. This is nickel steel, which is probably close to stainless steel. I could be off on that. And then here's the Model 70 that came next. Uh, and, you know, people like to memorize years and things like that, which is good. So it was 1936 that the Model 70 came out. And here's the Model 54. So you can, I don't know if that's clear. So, I mean, obvious the relationship between the two. Oh, why did they change the bolt handle on the Model 70? Because this one, like the Mauser, uh, pivots up too far. So you can see on the 54 if you had if you had wanted to put a scope on this rifle this would interfere with the scope i've seen 54s with side mounted scopes you know where there's a plate here um, i've seen some where they use these front receiver screws and they put a tall base which kind of looks interesting and then they put a scope high enough so it clears this but obviously that's not acceptable for a factory gun so they modified the 54 they changed the safety. You can see that this is a more elegant design. And they uh, came up with what I think is probably the best factory trigger. I'm, I'm sure people will argue with me. And no doubt Timney triggers and Kanjar triggers. And there are, there are lots of aftermarket triggers. And probably in the details of how crisp they are, there are superior triggers, but in terms of simplicity, um, while preserving adjustability, the original Model 70 trigger was excellent. Um, now, Rudy pointed out that the current Model 70 has an excellent trigger, and I'm sure that's the case, but I, I try to go back to the fundamentals of gun design that I learned, and, and um, as you know, simplicity is paramount, and that's why the Mauser 98 trigger um, and the 54 and the later Model 70, but not the current Model 70, are excellent, in my humble opinion. Uh, so anyway, then the Model 70 receiver, we can review that, and you can see we always have to deal with recoil. So we have a receiver that's um, beautifully milled. It has a re an integral recoil lug. So, I mean, this actually, this recoil lug is superior even to the Mauser. It's a massive recoil lug. And there's no way that recoil is going to eat through the stock. So that recoil lug fits right in here. And uh, this is, I, I looked this up and now I forgot. I think it's 1946 or 47. And, and, and the stock is fine. You've seen this before on my videos. It's missing the butt plate pieces falling off excellent anyway uh, oh the model 70 and the model 54 both have the screw into the barrel um, which I kind of like but some people don't anyway so um, you can see that this receiver is it is not bar stock it's it's made to perfection look at all the nut milling operations in here for the bolt release the trigger everything that's on this rifle was purpose designed and purpose built to be what they tried, what they announced was the best firearm bolt action rifle in the world. And I actually 
bought a pre-64 Model 70 years ago and the retired fellow gave me this brochure. And um, so I, I set it on the table and it's not very easy to film. Um, I looked it up and I think that brochure uh, came out in 1936 or 37, which corresponds with the um, introduction of the Model 70, which you now know is uh, kind of an improved Model 54. And you can see all the different calibers that it came out with. One of the more interesting ones is 7mm Mauser and uh, 253 thousandths. And these are around, you can find them at shows. And they make a point of, of uh, noting the excellence of their trigger, which I think is warranted. And then actually, if we just shift the camera over this way, this is the floor plate assembly of the Model 54. And you can see it's a very simple sheet metal assembly with the screws. And uh, for comparison, that's the Mauser 98. This is milled steel. And then over here is the Model 70. It's a three-piece assembly, beautifully made and um, trigger guard floor plate and so on. So it gives you an idea. Um, naturally, this is the best. It's one piece, milled steel. But as I said, this assembly here is probably as expensive to make today as the entire Tika T3 action. There are so many milling operations in this, but um, I'm not trying to, trying to um, pick on the Tika T3. I have two, they're excellent rifles, but these things are as they are. So anyway, there, there are the floor plate assemblies. So um, you know that my opinion on the Model 70 is with the majority, and I think it's safe to say it's a superb rifle. And now we have to shift to an enormously successful rifle, and that's the Remington Model 700. So if the Model 700 um, was the uh, successor to the Model 30, which we haven't talked about yet, I thought maybe it's useful to have where the Remington came from. And this also is a Mauser based design. So this came out first. And as you can see, the P14 and 17 Enfields were modified Mausers. These were very successful rifles and actually more common than the Springfield, even though not that many people are aware of the P14, P17. Some were used in the UK or by the UK and so they were in 303. And uh, the American version was in 30-06. Um, no pressure limits on this action excellent action so that's where the the uh, that's the ancestor to to the model 700 so i guess what happened was the engineers at remington looked at the at what they were using and, and a lot of the parts they used were from were war surplus and they thought there was no way we can keep making this rifle and their com main competitor was this model 700 that we just looked at and they looked sorry at the model 70 we just looked at and they probably thought, well, that Model 70 is really almost as expensive or in some ways more expensive to make than a Mauser 98. So they wanted to, to jump the whole Mauser concept because there's no point building another Mauser. So how to do that? And they came up with, I think this is probably by numbers the most successful bolt action rifle of all time. Uh, I'd like to review the Mauser, sorry, the Ruger 77 at some point. Um, and Remington accomplished an amazing thing. I mean, it's a sporting rifle action. They got rid of the claw extractor, which I didn't mention is present on the Model 54. That's the claw extractor, which is present on the Mauser 98. And people talk about it to this day. This is the Model 70. So when you strip around off the um, magazine, um, or follower, I should say. The, the cartridge is captured by the claw, and it's, it's a controlled feed. The round isn't going to go anywhere, it's not going to fall out. And once the action is closed, and the round is fired, extraction is a certainty. The claw extractor is an excellent idea. The only disadvantage to the claw extractor is the claw can't jump the cartridge rim 
it has to be fed from the follower. And Remington uh, just decided to come up with an action that accomplished most of the objectives of the Mauser 98, or all of them, but got rid of the expensive parts. And as you can see, this action is made from bar stock. This is just a tubular piece of steel that's been milled. They put a box um, magazine or, or uh, box housing in here. And then here's the, the trigger. And there's been all kinds of controversy and litigation about this trigger. And I, I, I've actually taken these apart. A lot of people have. And um, this is definitely not as simple as this trigger. You, you can't see the insides of this trigger. Not that you should necessarily have to, but this, this is a far cry from the Winchester Model 70. And yet, this is the dominant trigger now. Not that they're mechanically the same, but most triggers look like the Remington Model 700 with different sears and, and roller bearings and all kinds of things inside. Um, I tend to be a purist and still like the Mauser 98, and, and I can see all the parts and what's what and how the trigger interrelates with the sear, but that's just me. So anyway, um, now talking about other details, so Winchester Model 70 recoil lug, uh, Remington Model 700 recoil lug, so this is a separate piece. This barrel is threaded, I've shown you those barrels before, they drop this piece in, they have to accomplish headspace. In case you don't know, that's the distance from the front of the bolt face to the rear of the cartridge. So when a cartridge is seated in a chamber, there's the, there's the bolt face. When this action is closed, the, uh, the cartridge has to be trapped between the bolt face and the back of the chamber. So there can't be any movement or else the brass will get momentum and start moving backwards. You have, you have problems when, when that happens. The brass stretches potentially burst depending on whether it's excess headspace or not. But you can read about that. Anyhow, um, they got rid of the claw extractor. Um, they designed and still talk about their three rings of steel. So the cartridge case is, is inside the bolt face and they installed a very small, it's hard to see it, there's a very small extractor um, and ejector actually in the bolt face and it took some amazing um, uh, special milling apparatuses to accomplish that, but they did. Uh, then it was simply a matter of cutting out this section for ejection. This by the way is a left hand action, it's a 30-06 must have been made in the 70s or something. What happened was simple. I, I went to a gun store and they had uh, this left-hand model 700. And um, I can flip it around and you can see it's marked 700 left-hand. And it was so cheap that I, um, I bought it. And um, I don't know, something about operating the left-hand bolt action was, was interesting and I was comfortable with it. So I, I uh, kept this left-hand model 700. Anyway, you can see uh, that from the recoil lug to the shape of the action to the number of milling operations that are necessary, this is a very simplified Mauser action. On top of that, this bolt handle is not part of this bolt body. This is brazed on. You can barely see a brazed line and they've come up with all kinds of clever ways of uh, making these now and um, you know, everything to reduce cost. Uh, getting back to the trigger, a lot of people say it's an excellent trigger, uh, even if it did have some problems uh, with uh, uh, safety issues at some point. But I, I, um, I don't dispute that it's an excellent trigger. Uh, but the main thing I wanted to say was uh, this Remington Model 700 is an amazingly adaptable action, and they've made the transition from just a sporting rifle. I mean, this came out I think originally as the model 721, which was the short action, then came the 722. Um, I hope I have them right. One is short, one is long. Anyway, you can look it up. And then came the 725. I just sold one of those. And then came the 700. And the 700 has been around ever since. And they've made the transition to um, these modern um, 
basically warfare based rifles. They've got every kind of synthetic stock. Uh, they've had several military applications and they've proven themselves in every way. So whenever I run into somebody who says that they're bad, uh, I don't know. I think they sold 8 million of them. Can they really be that bad? And um, I, I brought out this ADL version. So sometimes they wanted to offer the market something cheaper. So this one, I think I've shown you this before, has no floor plate. You just feed the rounds from the top. This one's a little older. It has impressed check ring. The new ones have um, either machine cut or even laser cut check ring. Nice stock. Uh, actually, all together a nice rifle. And then, um, just to complete the story and shifting back to the Model 70, this is the most modern version and it has everything that I've shown you in, in the pre-war model except it has a trigger that is arguably better from a release point of view so it's a I mean it's a very crisp trigger and people seem to focus on that a lot it has the um, island barrel band for the same as the uh, for rear sight the same as the pre-war and the model 54 has it as well I don't know if we can shift around with the camera as much as we need to and then I should mention this is the post 64 model 70 and you can see there's no claw extractor the action is similar to the model 700 but but definitely not the same and I'm mentioning it because the push feed model 70 um, it was not popular when it came out as I've mentioned before but it still is an excellent action I suppose what happened was that the Model 70, the original one, was just so excellent that even though this is not a bad rifle, it was so different from what the market was used to seeing that people just said, well, we don't like that gun, and if we want something like this, we'll buy a Remington. And Because Remington never had anything like the Model 70. They went, they went directly from this Enfield based Model 30 to, the, to, to what I would say is the fully modern Model 700. And um, I wanted to mention that when you run out and buy Tika T3 or any of these modern um, bolt actions, they've come up with some pretty clever manufacturing techniques, but effectively, uh, just as the Mauser 98 is sort of the parent to the Model 70. Um, the Remington 700 is the parent to almost all the modern variations of Mausers, the simplified designs. And uh, it's actually surprising to me that the that the other ones sell as well as they do because the Model 700 has everything that, that those other guns have. I mean, the Tika might be smoother and there are other advantages and um, people talk about inherent accuracy and how well the barrels are made and there are a lot of variables that keep shooting interesting um, but uh, I have to say I mean the model 700 is is a fantastic rifle and the model 70 Winchester is in a class of its own so the people ask me a lot of questions and it's it's an excellent thing to do to compare the heavyweights of um, of American rifles. On the other hand, there really is no comparison um, in a lot of ways. And, and I say that because the Model 70 Winchester is just superior in every way. Because the person who buys a rifle is not thinking about profit margins and um, how efficiently something was made. They want a rifle that lasts a lifetime or longer and is superbly made and um, nothing's come close to the Model 70 mainly because it's the closest to the Mauser 98 uh, arguably a better trigger so not much to improve on and I'll take this Alaska note which I think you recognize this is in 300 win mag I bought this recently off a friend of mine and um, I can't I 
I'm not aware of a better bolt action rifle on the market than this rifle. Everything's the way it should be. And they've returned to the more or less um, pre-64 features. So, it's, it, you know, it's fun comparing, but this is a far superior rifle, even though um, it's probably, it hasn't won matches and all the rest of that stuff, and it doesn't offer all of the variations that the 700 can offer for a variety of reasons that have to do with how stiff the action is and the trigger and so on. But those are distractions. Uh, in terms of fundamentals, this is the better rifle. So uh, probably some of you will agree, some of you won't agree. Um, and I'd be interested to hear differing opinions. I always um, like to be proven wrong, uh, but, but that's what I concluded from my experiences. And that's about it. Thanks for watching again. We'll see you next time.